Hello, and welcome to Oceanside Transit Center. Today I'm taking Amtrak's Pacific Surfliner up to LA in business class. I had a tight connection getting here, and I was just in time to see my train, Amtrak 593, pull into the station. Business class boards from the second to last carriage on the train, just after the cafe car. Awesome, thank you. The first of the two business class cars on this train was actually a superliner coach, configured in what would be considered business class for Amtrak's long distance routes. I chose to sit at a table in the next car down, so I could appreciate the sunset over the Pacific, as all of the seats on that side of the train were taken in the Superliner coach. Not five minutes after boarding, the train pulled out of the station and began its two-hour journey back to LA. As we head out of Oceanside, let's take a look at some stats about our train and the Pacific Surfliner route. My train this evening is Amtrak Pacific Surfliner number 593 and is driven by Siemens SC44 Charger Locomotive number 2112. The train consists of six cars, with three coach cars, one coach cafe car, one standard business class car, and one superliner car. Amtrak's Pacific Surfliner runs 351 miles between San Luis Obispo and San Diego, with a total of 27 stops and 24 daily trains, carrying an estimated 3 million people per year. The total route takes about 8 hours and 30 minutes, with a top speed of 90 miles an hour and an average speed of 41.2. The table seating on Surfliners offers plenty of pitch and width, with more than enough space to stretch out. There are lights above the seats, as well as an outlet on the wall, which fortunately was working this time. Each seat reclines considerably far and makes for a comfortable sleeping position. The sun began to set as we left Oceanside, and oh boy was it incredible, with purple and orange hues across the sky. Included in the business class ticket is a complimentary snack and drink. The snack is provided in this excellent Pacific Surfliner box. The outside of the box shows scenes of the route, as well as a line with all of the major stations. Opening the box, the inside is covered in a mosaic of location signs for major stops on the route, such as LA, Ventura, and Santa Barbara. The snack box includes a wide variety of options, including cookies, trail mix, crackers, pretzels, cheese spread, and a buffalo-style snack stick, as well as a fresh nap wipe to sanitize before dining. I opted to pass on my drink for now, as I still had something to drink from my dinner stop in Oceanside. In addition to the snack service, business class passengers have a dedicated car attendant. They usually work out of the small kitchenette area seen here, which features a coffee maker, a couple sinks, as well as a refrigerator and other snacks. Ours was very active and accommodating, ensuring that all passengers were having the best possible experience. As we entered San Clemente, the sun had just set below the horizon, leaving us with only the beautiful orange twilight to illuminate the Pacific crashing against the coast. While we're enjoying the ocean, why don't you hit that subscribe button? It's totally free and it really helps support the channel. I have a lot of awesome content planned for the next couple months, so stick around if you want to see more. Oh, and hit that bell icon while you're down there so you never miss another video. As orange turned to darkness, I decided to take a walk back to the Superliner coach to see if any seats had opened up, and lo and behold, they had. Superliner seats are incredible. I have enough legroom such that I can stretch out and my feet barely make it under the seat in front. There is also a rather nice adjustable footrest that can ratchet to multiple positions. The tray table folds down from the seat in front and is fairly standard, although it does have to extend a bit before it's usable.
There are also lights above the seats, although I don't recommend turning them on unless you want to annoy your fellow passengers. The footrest returns to its place in the seat in front with a little coaxing. Because they are designed for long distance routes, Superliner seats have a leg rest that extends from beneath the seat to form a quasi bed while traveling. Combined with the substantial reclining distance, it's hard not to fall asleep just sitting here. Off to the side of the seats is this strange foot lever that I can't quite figure out the purpose of. I'll have to check it out as I exit the train. Let's head downstairs and check out the first level of the Superliner coach. The stairwell on Superliner coaches is in the middle of the car, as opposed to the two towards the ends in Surfliners. Downstairs, there are more seating options, as well as multiple bathrooms and other facilities. There's only about four rows of seats down here, with a couple options for people with disabilities. A couple posted placards show that this car was maintained at the Beech Grove shops, which, as the sign says, has been serving America and Amtrak for over a hundred years. There's also a poster down here featuring Amtrak's Southwest Chief, which terminates at LA's Union Station. There are multiple restrooms on the bottom floor, so let's start with the accessible toilet. Walking in, my first impressions aren't all that great, and it certainly feels like it's starting to show its age. Both taps work on the sink, and the soap, tissues, and paper towels are full. What's interesting is the cup dispenser on the wall, which implies that the tap water is potable, although I'm not sure I would trust it from the bathroom sink. Overall, it's certainly not the cleanest bathroom, and I would have really appreciated it if Amtrak would have cleaned it more frequently. Moving a little ways down the hallway is a combination restroom and dressing room. This one isn't much different from the other, but there is a small cushioned seat and coat rack to hang up clothes. The restroom facilities are much the same, with a similar feel of wear and tear to them. Fortunately, Amtrak has announced it will be refreshing the interiors of its long-distance fleet of coaches, so hopefully that will include a bathroom refresh as well. In the hallway just outside the restroom is the sign pointing passengers in the direction of their seats, as well as the stairway and the restrooms. The next stop on this route is San Juan Capistrano. The station here has a rather interesting platform that intersects with a major pedestrian thoroughfare, however there is still a regular crossing gate. There's just enough time here to stop and poke my head out before our train continues on its way. Walking back upstairs and towards the back of the train, it's possible to see our engine this evening. Once again, our train is powered by a Siemens SC44 charger, although this time it's locomotive number 2112. Turning around, I was able to spot the water dispenser in this car, which was clean and a nice addition, making it easy to stay hydrated. Downstairs in the business class car is more seating, as well as an accessible bathroom, another attendance station, and a couple luggage racks. Anaheim is next to roll into view, with the regional transportation center illuminated in a beautiful red glow. Walking through to the front of the train, I realized that all of the coaches ahead of mine were configured in business class, so it's not unlikely to get some extra legroom while traveling in coach. At the front of the train, it's possible to take a look out the front and imagine you're driving the train, although I would recommend doing this during the day as it's a little difficult to see at night.
After a little under two hours, we finally arrive in Los Angeles and begin that final leg into Union Station. Unfortunately, we were held just before the entrance to the station. Looking out the window, 10 red lights were strung across the signals at Union Station, halting our progress until one went green. Fortunately, we were only held for about five minutes before one signal turned yellow and we proceeded into Union Station. After packing up my things, I decided to try out that lever on the side of the seat. Turns out that it didn't do anything, or at least it appeared that way. My guess is that it's a recline reset lever that unlocks the seats and returns them to their original state, but the one I tried wasn't working. Taking a step down the stairs and off the train, and we finally made it back into Los Angeles Union Station, and only three minutes behind schedule. Next week, I'll be back in New York City to take a ride on Metro North, a journey that started out anything but smooth. I also want to say thank you for all of the awesome support and growth I've seen on the channel in the past few weeks. It really means a lot to me and helps motivate me to continue to make awesome content. If you're new around here, please hit that subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon so you never miss another video. But anyways, that's all I have for today. Thanks for riding with me, and I'll see you in the next one.